the Pride events. The name has become ironic. <laughs> There's nothing to be proud of when you see what is happening from Seattle to New York at these so-called Pride events. Now, I have been around long enough and living in New York City for nearly two decades to know the Pride events have typically been a little raunchy. It's not like they were always like attending the Queen's tea and now suddenly they've gone off the rails. But they've taken it next level, Glenn, next level. And before I show you what's happening in Seattle, I promised the audience this in my opening and I must tell you what I've seen in America in this videotape that's coming out right now in Seattle, in New York, and so on, reminds me of what I saw in Saint-Tropez in, in the city of France. <laughs> and let me walk you. It's a, it's a country that loves nudity. It loves nudity. But it doesn't like show up in a parade. It just shows up on the beach. I'm going to give you one video. Brace yourselves at home, folks. This is on the beaches of Saint-Tropez, which is known as sort of as a part. Look at this man. Now, we, look, we've put a little white circle around his bottom. But it's like an overweight man, probably in his mid-70s, walking along the beach with it all hanging out. It's not just the old, I must point out, very weathered breasts that you see on the women. I mean, the breasts that the women choose to show have seen like 70 years of sunshine. It doesn't, doesn't end well, ladies. Keep them undercover, okay? Keep them undercover. It's always the naked man from head to toe. And it's always somebody you don't want to see. It's not like, you know, I don't know, Tom Brady running down the, you know, or like one of the guys from Baywatch running down. No, it's always somebody who's unattractive, overweight, who wants to show you his penis. <laughs> Which leads me to my first encounter with nudity in France, again in Saint-Tropez, Glenn, when Doug and I decided we would take a sauna. And they said it was co-ed. So I knew, okay, I, I may potentially see men in there. Um, and I thought it might be fun to go in with Doug. Whatever. You never get to do that really here in the States that much. We walk into the sauna, and I am telling you, full, full frontal. There was, an, <laughs> Abby's laughing. There was a man, he was probably 76 years old, I'm guessing, around there. I mean, totally naked. His penis was flayed out. It was flopped out on his leg. The, and then his wife, who was, I mean, I, she had to be charitably like a size 29 or 30. I don't know. But every role, every, every, everything exposed. And Doug and I are trying to squeeze ourselves into the middle, being as like not close to anybody's genitals as we could possibly, and trying not to make eye contact, right? Thank you for the love of God, get us out of here. You can't just walk out immediately. Like, I don't want to offend them. I'm not like naming them here. You know who you are. Um, but it was so uncomfortable. And that leads me to what's happening here in America, which is open penis showing at the pride parades like in Seattle, here's the video. Okay, for the listening audience, it's several men, totally naked on bikes, waving. Oh, they wear helmets though. <laughs> they cover that head. <laughs> waving. And this would be kind of funny if you didn't see many children in the other shots of the parade, Glenn. So what the hell is happening with pride? Yeah, you know, look, I mean, the gay and lesbian movement was an important part of my life. It's what enabled me to be legally married. It was something I supported for a long time. And the linchpin of it is something that not only I believe, but that most Americans ended up believing. There was a culture war consensus in the United States, and it was based on the principle that adults have the right to live their lives in whatever way they think will bring them the most self-actualization and that a healthy, decent society facilitates that freedom and doesn't impede it. And if you look at polling data in 2015, most Americans favored same-sex marriage, even young conservatives, and even people had no problem with trans adults. They thought trans people should have basic legal protections. They shouldn't be kicked out of their apartments. They shouldn't be fired from their jobs. All of that un has unraveled because the LGBTQIA plus two movement or whatever acronym you prefer has basically waged a war on that principle. There were people chanting in the streets, we're coming from your we're coming for your children. The San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus sung a song that said, We're coming for your children. They want to indoctrinate people's children. They're claiming that you are required to get certain trans affirming treatment for your children if they identify as trans, even if you don't want them to, and that you could be deemed guilty of child abuse and have your children taken away if you don't. The whole movement has transformed from one we want to be left alone and live our lives the way we want to know actually we want to control your lives too and make your kids think what we want them to think and even influence the way they grow up. And this has unraveled that consensus. 
And this is all part of it. This is a movement that was once a marginalized community in the United States, didn't have much power, had to hide, was genuinely persecuted. They now have every institution of power on their side. They know it, and it's become a bullying movement. And this idea that we're going to go out into the streets publicly in front of your kids and be fully naked and sexualize that nudity, and you can't do anything about it, is the mentality of a movement that believes, in this case good re with good reason, that they are now sort of the majority, that they have the power. And they're using it in ways that are very self-destructive. Mm -hmm. And then the problem is too, on top of the nudity, there's always like an element of bondage, some sort of sexual fetishization, something to take it next level for your child. It's like, my kids were actually not with me in that video that I showed where we saw the naked man on the beach. That was the day we were with the Cardones. But um, it, like adding the intentional sexuality to it takes it next level and makes it more problematic than just having to catch a glimpse of a naked person. Neither is ideal for the young guys, but um, the, the second is even more so. You, you talk about the bullying. This video out of a New York City Pride event where an anti- trans rights activator, uh, activist. I don't want to call her that because it's really, she's a pro-woman's advocate. She's there standing up for women's rights. Um, she went into the middle of the, the belly of the beast with a sign. That's it. She wasn't looking, people are like, she was looking to get punched. No, she was not. She was trying to make her message heard at the very place where the, the, the protesters were. When Antifa shows up, when the parents are protesting out of a California school over inappropriate sexual content for children, does the left blame Antifa? Saying, you shouldn't have showed up. No, they embrace them. But one person shows up at this pride thing where it's all about the trans movement. It's about not about LGB. Um, and look what happens to her. Watch this, SOT 15. You say bullying, and I see the tolerant far left. Yeah, it makes me sick. You know, I mean, protest is a constitutional right in the United States. It's always been part of the fabric of the United States. I've never cared if, you know, people don't believe that the law should recognize same-sex marriage. That's their right to believe it. All I care about is whether the law provides it. And this idea that it's not enough to have full legal protection, that you are now going to demand that everybody recite the pieties that you believe in, which is exactly what that is, that, you know, we can't accept the fact that there's even one person who doesn't disagree, who disagrees with our dogma and the cheering about that person getting beaten and attacked violently when they were peacefully protesting is the kind of mentality that, you know, does come from this idea that we're the ones who now have the power and we're not longer about getting equality for ourselves or winning the right for adults to live our lives freely. But instead, we're going to force you and your children to think the way that we want. And we will use force of every kind. If you don't, that's the part that's becoming extremely repellent to me. In a startling description, the UN food chief warned the world with the words, knocking on famine's door. He called what we're facing, quote, a perfect storm of a perfect storm. And he is not alone. A Barron's report says a food shortage could be coming even in the U.S. Farmers see it too. John Boyd Jr., a fourth-generation farmer, recently said, we're going to see empty food shelves in the coming months. That's why getting survival food is more important than ever. Create your own stockpile of the best-selling Four Patriots Survival Food Kits. It's not ordinary food. We're talking good for 25 years, super survival food. Handpacked in a family-owned facility in the USA and giving jobs to over 200 Americans. They have different delicious breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. And you can make these meals in less than 20 minutes. Just add boiling water, simmer, and serve. And right now, for the next few days, viewers are going to get 10% off their first order at 4, the numeral 4, patriots.com. 4patriots.com by using the code MK. Go to 4patriots.com. Use the code MK to start your stockpile today. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.